two household names, weeks of qualifiers, a grueling FFA, and three matches culminating in one of the biggest grand finals in Halo's history. And a first place winner is gonna take home $200,000. That's right, and Pistola versus Ace, two powerhouses in terms of competitive Halo history. This is the story of how, even if just briefly, Halo 4 showed the gaming community exactly how intense the series could still be. Of what happens when a wizard faces off against a magic card in a battle so intense that had every single person who watched it forgetting to breathe. This is the story of Halo's most iconic 1v1. When Halo 4 released in the November of 2012, the community was waiting with bated breath. It was going to be the first game in the series that Bungie hadn't developed, and fans all over the world were anxious to see what the new team at 343 could do with the storied franchise. Do you have do you have faith in 343? Do you think they're going to deliver? Uh, from what I've seen, absolutely. If it's anything like Forward Under Dawn, this is going to be a freaking awesome game. From the trailers and everything, it looks like 343 have done a really good job with the game, so I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the single player and everything. Upon release, two things became immediately clear. One, that 343 had crafted a beautiful story filled with impactful moments of raw emotion. And two, that the multiplayer was less than stellar. In Green Sprint for the first time, a Call of Duty-esque loadout system instead of arena-style on-map pickups, capped off with a five-shot BR for some reason, really soured the community. This is partially because a decent chunk of the community is resistant to any change at all, but also partially because these alterations were seen as fixing a problem that didn't exist. Listen, okay, there has some there has been something done to this game that wasn't enjoyable. The online experience has to be better. You have to mock what has been done in the past. You don't have to reinvent the wheel for your matchmaking experience when Halo 2 and Halo 3 both paved the way for this. While the casual community was having a fit over that, the competitive side was just sort of floating in the abyss. Sure, there were events, but after MLG ditched the series during Halo Reach, the scene was in a rough state. A minuscule prize pool and abysmal attendance at LAN events turned the once golden child of competitive gaming into a laughingstock. Now, of course, there were outside factors to this. Namely, that Black Ops 2 and CSGO, which are regarded as incredible esports titles, both released in 2012 in direct competition to Halo 4. Regardless, it left Halo's competitive scene in a withering state. Now I bring all of this up not to dump on H4, but rather to provide some context for why the match that unfolded in the fall of 2013 was such a huge deal. Fast forward to July 3rd, 2013. Microsoft announces that they're going to be holding a Halo 4 Global Championship two months later. Unlike most Halo events though, instead of the usual 4v4 competition, this one was going to be a solo endeavor. Players could qualify on LAN at RTX, the Rooster Teeth Expo, or at Gamescom, if you know they wanted to fly to Germany. The top six from each of those events would qualify for the championship. For those that didn't want to or couldn't travel, there were also five weeks of online events where the top four from each week would qualify. Everyone who qualified had their expenses covered as well to ensure that there was no financial barrier to getting the best of the best out to compete. So the qualifiers went on, the players proved their worth, and we found ourselves in Seattle on the weekend of August 30th to September 1st. Gamers, developers, spectators, fans, and Spartan Force from around the world, welcome to Seattle. The first order of business was whittling down the 32 players. To do this, there were a series of free-for-alls, with the top four from each set moving on. The top eight match to decide who would move on to the 1v1 stage was absolutely stacked from top to bottom. Contra, Enable, Cloud, and Formal, yes, that Formal, were the bottom half of the final FFA. That left the top four to duke it out in a pair of 1v1s for the semifinals. The first semi saw Aaron Ace Elam take on Straight Sick. Straight's a big time FFA player, whose accomplishments include winning the Bic Flex 4 FFA in Halo Reach. With the odds stacked against him, Ace was able to pull out a 9-7 victory and secure his spot in the finals. And that is gonna do it, 5-4, that is it, ladies and gentlemen, Ace is moving on to the finals! The other semifinal had Justin, I got your pistola, Deese, going up against Legit. One of these guys is eight minutes away from a shot at winning 200. $1,000. Having cut his teeth on FFA, Ola put that skill to good use, coming out on top of the matchup 7-4. And he's going to get taken out. That solidifies it, ladies and gentlemen. Pistola is moving on to the final. At last, it was time for the grand finals. Each player was guaranteed $75,000 just for making it that far. 
but the winner would walk away with $200,000. So the pressure was on for these legends of the game. First of all, congratulations for making it this far. Even if you lose, you're still going home with $75,000, but that is no reason to rest on your laurels. One map, Skyline, 10 minutes, and each other were all that stood in the way between them and the title. Championship round. Once the game started, Ola immediately made a mad dash for the on-map concussion rifle. Upon securing it, he started to hunt down Ace. After some back and forth, with each player losing some shields a couple of times, Ola drew first blood with a well-placed grenade. He's gonna be right by the corner and he, and he gets the grenade kill. That's the first kill and he's that bit closer to $200,000. Ace quickly fired back with a great nade of his own to tie things up at one. He's gonna be able to get it. Oh! After Ola took the lead once again with some solid BR shots, Ace responded before using the concussion rifle to find his second kill in a row and grab his first lead in the match. Then it was Ola's turn to rack up two in a row and take the lead off the back of a straight up OBR and concussion BR combo. The encounter, as both players gonna fight each other, and Pistola is able to take him out and net himself that fourth kill. One step closer with four minutes and 38 seconds left on the, the clock. The two traded a few more kills back and forth, and with 40 seconds on the clock, Ola had a one kill lead. In a last ditch effort, Ace flew at Ola, and with a crispy BR, was able to tie the match at six. Ends up finding Pistola. The encounter's going down. This could seal out the game. Pistola with the encounter. And he gets oh, it. Oh, oh, oh my god. Ace ties the match. Oh my lord, I cannot even believe this. Oh, Unless like it's gonna be a tie. That we might go to a tiebreaker match. Here we go. Boy. Here we go. He finds him in the corner. That's and he gonna can't be it. And it's a tie. Oh, we're gonna have to go to our tiebreaker oh. match, Golden Boy. We are gonna so, what now? Obviously, you can't have a championship match finish in a tie. So, what was the tiebreaker? Well, it turns out it was good old-fashioned sudden death. Battle. We're gonna get that tiebreaker match <laughs> going in just a moment, I believe. It's gonna be the first kill to win. We're gonna have one tiebreaker match, and it'll be the first kill to win in that game. <laughs> Next kill wins. Almost immediately, Ace was able to strip Ola down to no shields. While the wizard was able to live up to his reputation of being a pain in the ass to kill, this allowed Ace to go back and grab the concussion rifle uncontested. He juked him, he juked him but Ace, Ace has oh a concussion rifle. Not long after, the two found each other. Ola landed some well-placed shots and was able to drop Ace down to low shields. Actually out there, and Ace is actually gonna have barely any shields left, but Sola going in. The hunt was on. He chased after Ace and found him just as Ace's shields were starting to regen. Right the two hugged it out on stage after, and Ace was presented with his well-deserved trophy. Congratulations! Not bad for a guy who barely made it to check in on time, had no real expectation of making top eight, and had never played a 1v1 in Halo before Championship Sunday. While Halo 4 may not be the community's favorite, there's no denying that had the circumstances been different, it could have produced numerous incredible moments like this. A self-described mediocre FFA player defying the odds in winning Halo 4's biggest event, while maybe, just maybe, someone had an extra card.